what are the problems that you face when you start learning differential geometry? Well, this is something which is going on in the mind of every single student, every single individual who has started or will be starting to learn differential geometry because it is generally considered differential geometry is a very, very difficult subject to learn. And I am going to tell you that how you can make differential geometry learning easy, how you can start loving differential geometry. And I'm going to surprise you that this is not by doing mathematics, not by solving sums, not by reading many books of differential geometry, but something else. What is that else? For that, you need to watch the video till the end because I'm going to give you a very, very unique method to make the life of students learning differential geometry super easy. For that, you need to watch till the end and subscribe to my channel, Physics for Students, because I try to make videos on complex things and try to make life easier. My name is Shonak and you're watching this video on my channel, Physics for Students. So first we need to understand that what are the problems that we face in uh, when we start learning differential geometry. I have already made a video where I have told what is the first book that you would do but I would like to elaborate a little bit by giving something a kind of a concrete solutions to that and it is always watch better to make a video where I'm speaking and you're watching and that is how things really make up. So the first thing is that there is a preconceived notion that differential geometry is difficult. Well, I cannot help removing that concept because through years it has been taught maybe in a very wrong way that both differential geometry and topology are difficult things. But I wouldn't say you, I differ for this opinion and it is not to be so. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is that there are certain prerequisites that you need to know before you start differential geometry. You can go back to my video where I have talked about what are the prerequisites, what are the mathematics that you really need to know. But I can tell you this much that uh, even if you know the real um, uh, prerequisites, real analysis, sets, differential equations, partial differential equation, still you will feel there's a problem with differential geometry. Why you know? I will tell you the answer. The answer is because you directly jump into the mathematics. You really jump directly into the proofs. You start solving the problems and you get confused when you see those different uh, curves and uh, surfaces and planes and they look something very alien to you. So first of all, what I would say is that take a little bit of time before you start learning differential geometry. I mean to say, even if you ta uh, start with your first textbook in uh, writing down those equations, uh, thinking of the Gauss's theorem, the gauss bonnet theorem, other things, take a little bit of time. I assume that those who are watching this video already have calculus, real analysis, set theory, analysis, everything that you really know, or even if you don't know, it is worthwhile to listen to this video. So what I would say is that not only differential geometry, differential geometry, topology, complex analysis, reanalysis, all of them has basically a history behind that. Now wait, please don't stop the video because you might think that am I going to teach you history? Am I a history teacher? No, I'm a physics and mathematics teacher, but I have realized through my ages, through my teachings, through different universities, professors, etc., that learning that uh, basic understanding or why this differential geometry actually came into that is super important. So what I would like to tell you is that you can go back to my video, what is the first book that you should learn while doing different, learning differential geometry. I would say that please learn the evolution of thoughts, how differential geometry actually came into being. And to be very honest with you, even if you start with the basic school level, uh, I would say differential, uh, school level mathematics, say Euclidean geometry, algebra, trigonometry, anything, this has got a history. This has got something which you really need to understand before you jump into the mathematics. So what is that you really need to know? Now, the history actually gives you a thorough and complete understanding of mathematics. The history gives you to know that, okay, when you will be dur during the theorem, say, uh, axiom 1, axiom 2, or, uh, for example, neutral geometry, anything like that, hyperbolic geometry, the planes and the surfaces, you will really know, okay, so this theory or this theorem 
which I am reading right now is dating back to maybe 500, 300, 700 years from right from now and that is the thought, that is the thought process and that is how geometry has been developed. I can tell you geometry is the oldest and the most crude form of mathematics which has been invented by Indians, Greeks and other philosophers. I mean to say civilization. So if you really don't know that why I am reading this theorem, why I am doing this proof, why these axioms would be necessary to prove that you will never understand differential geometry, you will lose interest and you will constantly complain that mathematics is not my cup of tea. So first what I would request you is that go back to a book which tells the development of geometry, development of non-Euclidean geometry and how it has evolved through time so that you get a purpose, you get a direction and you can really understand that why I am doing this and what is the purpose behind that. That is point number one, most important, please go through the history the evolution of thought, how differential geometry has been evolved. Now once you are done with that, I would still say take a step back. Don't go into differential geometry even right now. Now there is something which is called the foundation of Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometry. Uh, we all agree that obviously non-Euclidean geometry means differential geometry, but there are certain other steps of learning non-Euclidean geometry, number one would be hyperbolic geometry. I would request you to please have a look deep into hyperbolic geometry, hyperbolic planes, hyperbolic surfaces and do a proper mathematics again, not the mathematics. Learn the process of evolution, learn the process of thought, learn how it has been developed, then you will see that things are becoming so beautiful to you. The basic problem with higher level mathematics which I have seen while teaching the students is that how do you visualize abstract thought? I know there are many, uh, I would say, uh, subscribers who have requested me that please do make a video on what is abstractness and how we can, uh, you know, how we can improve our think, uh, thinking of abstract thinking. Uh, well, I, because I also need to think and find out with some concrete solutions. So the problem is that this abstractness which you are, uh, I would say, which you are facing right now, right now is because you don't know the history, because you don't know the evolution, because you have not seen Archimedes or uh, any other people, Plutarch, etc. I mean to say the entire thought of uh, uh, geometry which has been developed, how it has been developed and we, you really don't know. I mean to say we really don't know. So even if you go into the hyperbolic geometry and there are certain books which I will make a later video that is building the foundations of Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometry. Now this book, uh, I don't remember the name, I just made it yesterday. So this book also tells that I, the author says that I'm making a non-Euclidean geometry in order to make the Euclidean geometry sounds better. Now you see that we get interest primarily with non-Euclidean geometry, absolutely, because there are plane, surfaces, three dimensions, immersion, manifolds, these are super interesting than Euclidean geometry. But in order to know that, again if you read hyperbolic geometry, might be you have to turn down back the pages in your school days and you will say, okay, so Euclidean geometry is this. So it is a both way traffic. You learn non-Euclidean geometry to learn Euclidean geometry better. You do learn uh, Euclidean geometry to learn non-Euclidean geometry better. So, uh, so, you know, with the evolution of time and thought, we all get old and then we go back to our school days books and we really find out interesting because now we know the foundations, why it has been built for so. So my earnest request to those who are listening to this video, the students, uh, you know, those who are willing to do, who are doing differential geometry is, ta is to start learning a little bit about the history, the thought, how it developed. Most importantly is how the thoughts really develop and uh, I mean to say how, how, how these things came into being and then go and make a solid grounding on what you called Euclidean as well as non-Euclidean geometry, the foundations of non-Euclidean geometry, the proofs of both Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometry and then you are absolutely ready to take a leap and a dive into the ocean of differential geometry. 
so that's it that that is what i thought because i myself found very beneficial after reading the evolution of thoughts of differential geometry and then when i can see those pages it shows that you are revealing with time you are you are traveling back in a time machine when you can see the greek philosophers the romans the indian philosophers how they developed differential geometry or those thoughts and that is when differential geometry does not become abstract becomes concrete and it brings to life and you can really touch and feel all those beautiful surfaces figures and manifolds so please do subscribe to my channel physics for students and i will wait for your comments how do you think this is the right solution put up your thoughts in the comment box thank you until we will come up with i will come up with the next video thank you for watching this video we appreciate your time and patience if you want to connect with us and provide further feedback, comment or suggestions, please email us at contact.physicsforstudents@gmail.com. at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. See you soon in the next video.